Open world games have dominated the industry in recent years, but can such a complex genre be recreated in the Far Cry 5 map editor? Well, creators from all around the world have done exactly that, and today I'm going to showcase 10 of the best open world maps, along with a short review. Now a quick reminder that all the feedback in this video is purely subjective, and I'd like to thank everyone who's taken part, even if your map doesn't feature in the top 10. Now be sure to stick around to the end because as teased for many weeks now, there are some huge announcements in this video. They include a rename of my YouTube channel, the launch of our official Discord server, and huge changes to how you submit maps for this series along with the next theme announcement. But in no particular order, let's check out the top 10 open world maps made in the Far Cry 5 arcade. The first map today is Goji Desert by Toaster Weevil and we are starting off strong today because this map is an absolute masterpiece. It's got huge Mad Max vibes as you explore a wasteland for four different targets. And it may be a desert, but it is teeming with life and stories around every single corner. The first thing I like about this map is the visuals, which strike you right away. And the thing I like is not just the authenticity, it is the best desert I have seen in the editor, but it's also the variety as well with valleys, caves, and so many tiny little details, both in the open world and in the interiors as well. The second thing I really enjoy is the enemy variety and placement. You've got standard enemies all the way up to RPG guys, and the environment reflects those classes as well. So for example, the guys with flamethrowers are often environments surrounded by burns buildings. So there's a lot of logical placement done on this map. And the third thing I really like is that there's many gameplay approaches on this map, including some which lure you into a trap. So for example, I zip line into a cave thinking it was gonna lead to a stealthy approach, only to find out it had a cougar inside, which I shot, and then quickly alerted the enemies above. It constantly keeps you on your toes. Things to improve on this map are really hard to think of, but one thing that did stand out to me was the amount of dogs on the map. Now they are tied to specific areas, so they're not actually much of a threat, but the barking they produce is absolutely insane at times. It makes it very difficult to hear anything else. The thing I love most about this map though is the fact there's no health regeneration and it means that the relationship between you and the map is constantly changing. You go from the hunter to the hunted in a blink of an eye. And it means that you have to ask yourself every little question. Do I risk entering that building? Do I go stealthy? Do I go loud and surprise them? It really immerses you in the experience, but fortunately there's still plenty of health packs around to ensure the experience isn't frustrating. All I'm gonna say is that if Ubisoft do a sequel to New Dawn, they need this guy on their dev team. The second map today is The Devil's Forest by The Hidden Blade, which couldn't be any more different to the previous map because we go from a desert to an extremely lush alien planet that reminds me a lot of Endor from Star Wars. Now the first thing that stood out to me on this map was the intro sequence where you get to pick a whole bunch of variables from the time of day to the weather to even the music. But what I really enjoyed is that once you pick those there's almost a transition space for you to get used to the environment you've selected. It doesn't just throw you straight into the action and I find that really helps build immersion. The second thing I enjoyed was that this map feels completely alive. There were so many animal encounters, not just with myself, but with the NPCs as well. And it felt like everyone was at the mercy of this sci-fi planet. There are two things I would like to see improved. The first one is some of the terrain work, which is a bit rough around the edges, especially near the main road where you can see how it's been carved out from the surrounding terrain. A quick once over with the smooth tool would just make that transition a bit nicer. And I really would like to see some more aliens at the end. The whole time you're playing the map, it's suggesting there's aliens around, but only one spawns at the end. I think having a few more spawn would just up the intensity for the grand finale. Overall though, this map reveals itself gradually with targets that you eliminate revealing the next objective. And I find that it really gives you every part of this map in little bite sizes, so it never overwhelms you. And as a result, it's a really enjoyable experience. The third map today is Dying Hope by Harry Potheat, which takes you to an island city that reminds me a lot 
of the dying light world with a strong emphasis on verticality. One thing I really enjoyed about this map was the number of custom assets, such as an enormous crane which dominates the city skyline. There's also a lot of micro detailing too, with just about every building having some sort of cluttered shelter or a rooftop camp. It really gives it a lived in feel. The vehicles on this map as well give you a real playground feel because you can use helicopters or you can just explore on foot. It feels very open-ended. There are a few things that I think can be improved on this map. And the first one is a big one. The map is really dense. There's a lot going on, but it does feel strangely empty in terms of life. And I can't quite put my finger on it. I think it might be that there's actually very few AI on the map at once and the others gradually spawn in, which can be a limitation of the editor itself. But the only issue is that it makes it really hard to find your targets as the match goes on. I think swapping the general objective markers for actual marked targets would really help with that little issue. The second thing I think can be improved is that the edge of the island quite aggressively drops into the ocean. And I think having thicker vegetation around the perimeter of the island would just frame the map a little bit, a little bit better and ensure that the horizon doesn't feel quite so empty. Overall though, the amount of micro detailing on this map is insane with every single structure having a story to tell. And I really like it from that perspective. And now we move on to yet another very different experience with a map called The Last Ancient City by Pelican, which is something a lot more akin to a Tomb Raider experience. This map begins straight away with an incredible vista that immediately makes you feel small because there is a monumental cliff right in front of you. And that's followed by an excellent climbing sequence, possibly the best one I've ever seen in the editor because there's a lot of obvious grapple points on this climb, but there's also some very subtle cues as to where you should go next, such as some vines which are embedded in the rock face. Of course, you do run the risk of players getting lost when you use subtle cues, but I've found that this map found the perfect balance between direction and immersion. I also noticed that some of the harder jumps often had some sort of safety net below them, meaning you wouldn't die. And for players like me who really struggle with climbing sequences, that was really appreciated. A few things I would recommend on this map, the second half does open up quite a bit, but it's still nowhere near as open world as some of the other maps on this list. So a stronger emphasis on the theme I think would be better in the future. And you do occasionally see some rougher edges of this map during that climb, but that's normally the case when you have a lot of verticality because it is hard to hide all aspects of the build. The combination of assets on this map though is truly unique. Everything is so vine ridden that it's often hard to recognize assets we've seen countless times. It really feels like nature has reclaimed this tiny little island and it's a very handcrafted experience that I really enjoyed right until the end. We mark the halfway points of this list with an extremely special map called A Witch's Ballad by Matt Core Live. And as the name would suggest, this is heavily inspired by the Witcher franchise, which I must admit I have not personally played, but I can still appreciate this masterpiece of a map. The first thing that hits you right as you spawn in is that this map is gorgeous. Some of the natural areas can look a bit on the bare side at the start, but the built areas are absolutely incredible, such as the village, which looks even better at night, or the castle, which is largely custom made and features an incredible main hall. And of course, there's a small Easter egg here and there if you are willing to climb. The scripting on this map is also amazing. There is so much choice and consequence with completely different endings based on your decisions. This map can be as short or as long as you want it to be, and there's a whole range of activities to keep you busy if you want them. I also love the sense of passing time on this map, which made the map feel like a game in itself rather than just a short experience. There are a couple of things that could be improved, which really are nitpicking, but I would suggest. The first thing was some occasional issues with disappearing NPCs. And I also found that the instant teleportation when you slay the dragon at the end can be a little bit jarring. I think moving to a teleport location after you've slayed the dragon would give you a bit more time to enjoy your experience and just bask in the glory of finishing the mission. I also wonder if the green glow, which marks the start of different missions and side quests, is a little too subtle. I think upping the intensity of that would just mean that players definitely won't miss them. Overall though, this map has an extremely lived-in feel. 
from the farming area to the villages in the town. Towards the end of this mission, I was just looking over the landscape, reflecting on every part of the map that I had experienced. All the decisions you make add up to a completely custom experience, and Matt Cole really pushed the limit of the scripting on this map. And it meant that it truly embraced the theme of this showcase and makes for an incredible, memorable experience. Map number six today is Takedown Warzone by Scout Trooper YT. And this is a stealthy yet explosive experience set after dark in what appears to be a European town. And I enjoyed the map right from the start because you parachute in giving you full freedom as to what order and how you tackle the objectives. It really gets the open world theme right. There's also a really good town layout with lots of intricate areas and complex alleys. And I found the verticality on this map was also excellent, giving you the opportunity to run across rooftops and take out targets. It has a lot of Hitman vibes, which you guys know is a franchise I love. A few things I would like to see improved on this map, there is occasional class conflict. It feels like the city is very historical, set in perhaps World War II or something along those lines, but some of the weapons are quite modern. I think just making those two work together a bit better and using older weapons would just immerse you in the experience a little bit more. And some of the streets do look a fraction bare at times. I think having more clutter on them would just make areas between the main objectives feel a bit more interesting. The thing that was most interesting and impressive about this map though were the custom buildings, which were impressive not just because they blended in with the surrounding structures, which is something so hard to do, but they are destructible as well, which really makes the objectives interesting and fun to tackle. The next map is Assassin's Valley by the creator's name who I can never pronounce, you can see it on screen with some text. But this is an expansive desert landscape filled with subterranean secrets and a heap of sandbox opportunities. The first thing I loved about this map is the visual variety. I truly underestimate how beautiful desert maps can be, and this map confirmed that for me. It's got some really good ideas as well, such as a distant village just outside of the playable area, which really creates a sense of scale. The main combat locations are also great. Each one of them is unique from massive temples to small towns and caves. Each target felt like a completely different challenge, because of the different environments. The ending was also really good on this map with multiple exit points that reward player freedom right until the very end. And those multiple exit points are something I haven't really seen much of in this particular showcase. Recommending things to improve with this map is a really difficult thing to do. It's such a great map both conceptually and in its execution. The only thing that might improve it in terms of replay value is scripting options to choose a time of day or weather other than that, I really have nothing to suggest. Overall though, this map is very organic. You feel like you can approach it stealthily or loud in just about any way you want, and the map will allow for every single play style. At the same time though, it all feels very authentic, very believable, and is such an enjoyable experience to play through. The third last map today is Aspen County by Genesis MD, and this is an absolutely gorgeous country town that honestly feels like it could have been a real location from the Far Cry 5 campaign. It is that good. Firstly, this map feels like it has a bit of everything. The town is decently sized, but there's still plenty of surrounding homesteads linked via a complex network of roads. What I love most about this map though is that the transitions between those environments are incredibly realistic and very easy on the eyes, something that's really hard to do. There's also options over the world effects such as time of day and weather, and I found it interesting that these are placed in the town itself rather than presented to you right at the start of the mission. I do worry some players might miss these options as you do stumble across them, but at the same time I appreciate how the map is given to the players in a certain condition and they're not forced to customise everything right from the get-go. The classes and vehicles also allow plenty of room for different playstyles to keep you coming back again and again. In terms of recommendations for this map, I do find that it's a little obvious just how much the creator has used every inch of the map editing canvas, with key locations and roads often being right next to the edge of the playable area. That said, he has done a very good job of masking those boundaries, and I do think it was a worthy sacrifice for just how expensive and beautiful this map is. The town area itself does look incredibly clean as well. I don't feel that the place needs to look trashed, but the occasional piece of rubbish on the main street would just break up the repetition on the eyes. I do suspect though that there isn't much budget left to play with on this map. 
Overall, everything on this map feels handcrafted. Each homestead is unique, down to the smallest of details, and I actively looked around the map to try and find where the creator had taken shortcuts, but I couldn't find any area that wasn't given an immense amount of detail. You can see the love and time the creator has put into this map. The penultimate map today is Three Kings, which is a very different experience that has you hunting targets throughout a flood-ridden world. And the water is the first thing I want to talk about because it's a very different concept and it gives this map a very different vibe to every other one on this list. It's also forced me to use mechanics that I haven't touched since playing the single player campaign, like using water as a stealthy way of moving around. There's also a lot of interior detail too, such as the addition of grapple hooks to some of the larger structures, and I really appreciated that as someone who's always struggled to navigate some of the more industrial assets. The finishing point is also in the sky, but there's some really good design here because he's placed helicopters at every single objective, so you're not punished for tackling each objective in any order you want. A few recommendations, I do find the look of this map feels a bit strange, the islands are very exposed and it can look quite unrealistic from the sky, perhaps making it look more like a swamp would just add a bit more immersion, and some of the terrain is also a little rough around the edges, especially from the bird's eye view. Once again, I think the swamp look would help mask some of those rougher edges, and a quick once over with the smooth tool will also help. The thing I really liked about this map though was just the different gameplay. I've already mentioned the water and the quirks that come with that, but there's also some other really cool aspects like mortars, which you just don't see that often in a lot of arcade maps. So this map makes you experience the Far Cry game in a very different way and just draws attention to different mechanics which are often forgotten, and I really appreciated that. And we finish up today with Fallout 3 by Oyster Waller, and I believe this is one of the best maps not only on today's list, but in the Far Cry arcade full stop. And that's coming from someone who has never really played Fallout 3 because I really struggle with the franchise. And that was immediately evident on this map because I instantly threw away my only weapon. I broke the scripting and somehow managed to drown in a national monument. Yet despite all of that, I still loved this map. The first thing I really enjoyed is that it's Fallout through and through. There's an incredible, incredible apocalyptic vista and a mixture of human and mutant NPCs to keep things interesting. There's also some great key locations. The incredible main town is something I was able to recognize even though I've seen very little of Fallout 3. The remake is that well done. And the interiors are something special too. These are some of the most convincing custom structures I've ever seen in the arcade, even though they are falling apart. And every inch of this world is just thriving with detail and story. It's a true experience to explore. The only downside to this map is that I did somehow break the scripting. Every time I went to sleep on this map, I would no longer receive any more waypoints as to what to do next. And that was really frustrating because I wanted to see every corner of this map. That said, I did still explore even without official objectives, and this map does have really good ratings, so I am suspecting it was something I personally was doing wrong with the scripting. Overall though, this map, you don't just play through it, you exist in the world. And the build quality is that fantastic that I wouldn't be surprised if Microsoft came along and bought this one too. So there you have it, the top 10 open world maps as created by you guys. Now you can see even more of the submissions on screen right now. And as always, I'd like to thank everybody for your support, especially of this particular showcase, because I was really unorganized when we first announced this theme, which is quite uncharacteristic of me. But I really appreciate everyone who reached out to me, let me know that the initial deadline was too small, and I definitely appreciated that upon reflection. So thank you for working with me. This is a collaboration effort, and you guys, as I always say, make this series possible. So once again, I thank you. But now it's time for those massive announcements that I've been teasing for weeks. Firstly, this channel is going to be renamed. That's right, on November 1st, 2020, I'll be changing my YouTube name from Sam Plays to Sam Builds. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with all the reasons for that decision, but long story short, I feel it's just a bit more distinctive and better reflects what we actually do here on the channel. Now, I'm gonna post a heap of reminders leading up to the name change, and you guys don't need to resubscribe or anything, just remember that I'll be known as Sam Builds from November 1st, 2020. Then the second announcement is the real exciting one. As of publishing this video, the Sam Builds Discord server is live. 
As you would have noticed, I've already embraced the new name there over on Discord, and I'm so excited to finally give you guys this because you've been requesting it for years. Now, I want this server to be a home for anyone that loves the creative side of gaming, and as a result, it's got a whole range of sections where you can post your Far Cry maps, you can re request collaboration partners, you can ask for technical help, and of course, more practical information as well, such as how you can actually join myself and other players in the Far Cry game. And that brings us to the third and perhaps the most important announcement, which is that this particular series, the Community Creation Series, will now be run through Discord. So that means that there will no longer be theme announcement videos. Instead, you'll be posting your map details on a dedicated channel on the Sandbuilds Discord server. Now, submissions are already open for the Far Cry 6 themed showcase, which will be closing on November 7th. So please head over to the Discord and get familiar with the platform if you do want to continue to take part, not only in that showcase, but in the series moving forward. I know this is quite a big change and I want to make it as easy as possible for you guys and it is really easy. I've got the whole process explained under the rules and FAQ channel on Discord so please go over there and have a read if you find any of this a touch confusing. And I should emphasize that while map submissions will now be done through Discord, the final showcase video like we've done today will still be uploaded on YouTube as per normal. And of course, if you read through all of that and things are still a little bit on the hazy side, I can do a dedicated video talking you through the new process. Let me know if you guys feel that's something that's needed. I know all these changes are a lot to take in, but I think all of them are going to be great for the future of the channel. The name change will help me stand out a little more here on YouTube. The Discord server adds a whole new dimension to our community. And moving the map submissions also to Discord for this particular series will make things far more organized and give me more time to make actual videos rather than just theme announcements. Finally, I'd like to thank a very small group of people who have been helping me build the server for the past month, especially Callum and Hyena, who have set up some pretty crucial bots that were really important to make everything functional. As with most things on this channel, it's a team effort and it wouldn't have been possible without those guys. So a huge shout out and thank you to them. So head on over to the Discord server. It will be linked in the description below. But in the meantime, that has been the top 10 open world maps as created by you guys. Hey everyone, thanks for making it to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe as those simple actions have a huge positive impact on a small channel like mine. Be sure to check out our Xbox Club in the description below and on the screen right now you can see some of my other videos that I think you will really enjoy. Cheers!